This little dude here is an absolute monster. 32 gigs of RAM, a brand new AMD Ryzen 9 chipset, an ultra fast 1 terabyte SSD, quad HD and 8K resolution support, as well as the size being about 20 times smaller than a regular PC case. May I introduce the Geekom AS6 powered by Asus. Ready to be compared against it is the Mac Mini with 24 gigs of RAM, the newest Apple M2 chipset, and also a 1 terabyte ultra fast SSD. SD. Having the motto of getting more done in less time, the Mac Mini is a sure staple of users who don't want to dish out huge amounts of money but still want to experience the signature Apple performance. We're going to be doing a bunch of GPU and CPU intensive tests, render some videos, check out the design, the read and write speeds, and the performance among other things in this headset comparison. Can a mini Windows PC hold the candle to the Mac Mini? One thing is for certain, you will be very surprised with the results. Let the facts speak. First, let's check out the design. I have to say that I'm not surprised with how premium the Mac Mini looks and feels due to the enclosure being made from 100% recycled aluminum. Just like the competition, it's quite small and compact when compared to mainstream computers and laptops. The Geekom AS6 on the other hand also has a nice design, reminiscent of the first miniature PCs that were released. The saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, was something I learned growing up in the United States, so it's reasonable that the same type of design has been passed down over the years for a portable Windows PC. It is made of a hard plastic and has air vents on each side. Taking a closer look at the ports, the power button is here with two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports by its side. Next to them, there's a very important USB 4 Type-C port, which is going to be necessary for using your setup in 8K. There's also an audio jack and a HDD LED light. On the front side of the Mac Mini, there is... nothing. Huh. Oh, they're all on the back. Had me worried for a second there. So, on the back side of the Mac Mini, you have two USB-A ports with a headphone jack right below them. Of course, there's also an HDMI slot with two Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports next to it. So when you have the regular M2 chip, you won't have access to 8K, but you can still utilize 6K at 60Hz over Thunderbolt. The M2 Pro allows you to access 8K over HDMI. There's also a configurable Ethernet port with the basic version being 1 gigabit, but you can also upgrade it to 10, which will cost you an extra 100 bucks. For the Geekom AS6, there are two 4K HDMI ports with a 5K display port below it. In the middle, there is also another USB 4 Type-C, as well as three more USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports and a 2.5G Ethernet slot. The main difference is that there are considerably more USB ports on the Windows-based mini PC, which allows you to be more versatile if you want to hook up a lot of more equipment, for example, when gaming. One thing that I would like to make a comment about before moving on is that both of them do not support an SD card slot, which means you will need to buy an adapter if you're into transferring files and photos. And I also shouldn't forget to mention that the Geekom AS6 comes bundled with a metal plate that can be used to attach the mini PC to the back of a monitor, further showing that it is a definition of a portable device. Still though, this phrase can only be said for the device, as the charger is quite big. Apple has integrated their power source into their creation, so all you need to keep it working is this short and simple cable, bringing us to the end of the design category. Now that we've gone over the fine details, it's time to run some intensive tests on these two beasts and see if they're good enough to handle what we throw at them. First up is Crystal Disk Mark on Windows, also known as Amorphous Disk Mark on iOS. It's an open source disk drive benchmark tool that is used to test storage performance like read and write speeds. If you copy or read very small files, then the last two lines will be of more use to you. If you work with large files, then the first two lines are what you need to look at and is the reason why we focus on this result for this test. So for the Geekom AS6, we see that the read speed is a little over 3600 megabytes per second and the write speed is just under 2800 megabytes. For the Mac Mini, the read speed is actually a little lower at just over 3200 megabytes and the write speed is around the same level with 3174.6 megabytes per second. If you're not up to date with these numbers, you might not know if they're good or bad, but I can guarantee you that these speeds are definitely enough for the majority of users, especially if you're just going to be using them for everyday tasks, playing games that aren't hardcore resource extensive, and some basic photo and video editing. Now let's take a look at Geekbench. It uses a scoring system 
system that separates single-core and multi-core performance, along with workloads that simulate real-world scenarios. The scores were pretty comparable, with the Mac Mini only slightly outperforming the GCOM AS6 across the board, which is pretty impressive since the price difference is quite visible. Then there is Cinebench. According to their website, Cinebench is a real-world benchmark that evaluates your computer's CPU capabilities. It's quite the popular tool to evaluate hardware performance. Just like Geekbench, we're looking at single and multi-core scores of the CPU, with some surprising results this time around. While the Mac Mini took the single-core test by a hair with 1,642 points over the AS6's 1,484, GCOM overwhelmed its opposition in the multi-core test by a significant margin by getting 10,812 points, while Apple's Mac Mini with the base M2 was able to reach 8,779. The next test is Speedometer 2.0. Speedometer is a browser benchmark that measures the responsiveness of web applications. It uses demo web applications to simulate user actions such as adding to-do items. We use Microsoft Edge on Windows and, of course, Safari on iOS. The result of the AS6 was 265, while the Mac Mini managed 422. After this, we fired up GFX Bench, which is a high-end graphics benchmark that measures mobile and desktop performance with next-gen graphics features across all platforms. We ran all the tests, but think that it's important to focus on the 1080p as well as the 1440p sections, as these are the most commonly used by the majority of people. As you can see, the Mac Mini outperformed the GCOM AS6 in the 1080p test with 289 frames compared to 111. This kind of shows you that you can play the majority of popular games on 1080p around medium graphics on the GCOM, but we wouldn't recommend 1440p because the frame rate drops below 60, which will show the degradation in performance. On the Mac Mini, you can comfortably play games on 1080p as well as 1440, which is an advantage if you want to push your device to the limits. That being said, you should know that more than 60% of the world still plays games on 1080p, so it's only a benefit for the minority. Alright, so enough of this benchmark testing. Let's see how well these two devices do in everyday life for videographers and photographers. We rendered the exact same Premiere composition in 4K 25fps with 60 megabits bitrate. The Mac Mini took just under 5 minutes, while the AS6 took a little over 8.5 minutes, which is still good when considering the video we rendered was a Hover Camera X1 video on our channel, which is a lot of effects and transitions in the Premiere file, so I'm actually really impressed. Last but not least, Adobe Lightroom. We basically applied a filter to 50 RAW and 50 JPEG files, then had Lightroom export them. It took a minute on the Mac Mini and a minute and 40 seconds on the GCOM AS6, meaning the Mac Mini had a significant speed advantage here. So, while it was obviously very hard to compare an iOS and a Windows device, we do have some conclusive thoughts at the end. We think that the GCOM AS6 is a real competitor, especially if you don't have bags of money to spill on Apple products. The starting price for the Mac Mini with the regular M2 chip is 600 bucks, but the version we use for this test to match the specs of the GCOM AS6 costs 1400 USD, which is a lot of money compared to the cost of the competition, which just happens to be almost half the price at $750. For this reason, it becomes a very hard choice. For the price of this Mac Mini, you can buy the AS6, an ICE 2K monitor, a full gaming setup with a keyboard, mouse, headset, and a webcam, and break even. On the other hand, the Apple ecosystem and performance is very enticing, so we will leave the choice up to you, but just don't forget to tell us that choice in the comments, as we are very curious about what you guys think. We hope this was a fun and also informative comparison for you, and if you like the GCOM AS6, check out the link in the description to look at the specs in more detail, and you can use our code to get a nice discount if you're interested. I'll see you in the next video.